Okay, so now we're gonna go over the cardiovascular assessment again. What is on your chest list or checklist for Genesis? What you're assessing and how to verbally report that. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the chest. And so with this, what you're going to do when you're inspecting is looking for any heaves or lifts on the chest wall. So with that, you do wanna get down and flat and look for any heaves or lifts. And in the cardiovascular area here, and you see nothing going on. So we can say with that, no heaves or lifts visible on inspection. Then we wanna look at the apical impulse. And so the apical impulse should be visible at about the midclavicular line in the fifth left intercostal space. Should only be seen in one intercostal space in a healthy heart. You, make, you may make it more visible by having patients sit up and that does help bring the heart closer to the anterior wall. So she's so thin, we should be able to see it. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna want to palpate. So mid, there's a clavicular, mid clavicular line and then you wanna get that fifth intercostal space. Feel there, so there's one, two, three, four, five, mid clavicular line. So I'm gonna reach up under, and you're gonna palpate. in that space, and I might actually have to make you lean forward. Oh, nope, there it is. So you should just feel a gentle tap touch your finger, and it shouldn't be more than a centimeter. So I've measured my fingers, and my index finger is a centimeter wide about. So what you would say is, um, and I went right to the palpating, but I didn't see it, so apical impulse is not visible with inspection, and the point of maximal impulse, which is also the apical impulse, is um, present in the midclavicular line, fifth intercostal space, and is no more than one centimeter. And there's a short, gentle tap noted. So we went right into that, okay? And then what we also wanna do is palpate for thrills and lifts. And so we're gonna use the ulnar side of the hand. You don't wanna to press too hard or you won't be able to feel something if it's there. So you're gonna palpate at the apex, the left sternal border, and at the base of the heart. So with that, the ulnar side of the hand, so you're gonna palpate gently here, here, and here. And I would say then that there's no thrills or lifts noted on palpation. Then we already did the PMI, and we wanna do the carotid pulse. And so that's medial at two and below the angle of the jaw. You're all nurses, you should know how to feel that. And then you would verbalize carotid pulse is five plus and synchronous with S1. So it's kind of nice if you can feel that and listen to the heart. And never feel the carotid pulse both at the same time. You can make them pass out, so let's not do that. Don't massage it either. Okay, and then this is where in the face exam, you could have auscultated the temporal arteries and the carotid arteries, or you can do it now. And so with this, you're going to be using the bell of your stethoscope. So for my stethoscope, it's a one touch. And so for the diaphragm, I press firmly. For the bell, I just like basically just barely place it on there. And so what you're going to wanna do, and again, I'm not gonna put this on here, but go ahead and lean your head towards me. That temporal artery there, just anterior to the ear. And you're just gonna, for the one touch, just lightly place it there and listen for any brewy. Same thing on the other side. Good. And then, oops, sorry about that. And then um, for the carotid artery, what I will actually have them do is take a deep breath in, out, hold your breath. Turn your head to the side, and I auscultate and hold my breath at the same time. Go ahead and breathe so that they're not holding their breath longer than I can. Turn to the other side, same thing, deep breath in, out, hold your breath. 
clear and go down. Good. And then you would say, no groovy auscultated to the temporal or carotid arteries. And then you want to listen to the rate and rhythm of the heart at the apical pulse. So you could do that now or wait until you actually do all of your heart sounds. And so, um, we, and I'm going to wait until we do it with all of the heart sounds. So again, you're going to do this with the bell and the diaphragm. If you have a one touch, you can just tell me I'm listening with the diaphragm and now the bell. Diaphragm, now the bell. So when we go to the aortic area, that is the second intercostal space at the right sternal border. That's aortic. Pulmonic is same second intercostal space, but now at the left sternal border. So that's pulmonic. Then herbs point is, um, or you can call it the second pulmonic area. That's the third, one more down, left intercostal space along that left sternal border. And then we have the tricuspid area, one more down, that's the fourth left intercostal space. And then we have the mitral or apical area. And so that's at the apex of the heart, so that's the fifth intercostal space, mid clavicular line, okay? So when we're auscultating here, we're going to find that second intercostal space. Listen always to skin. Whenever you're listening to heart and lungs, you always must listen to with your stethoscope on the skin, not over close, okay? So you find that space and lightly here with the bell at the aortic space and the diaphragm. See that pressure? Then make sure you're listening to a good S1, S2. Then you move it straight across, pulmonic, bell, diaphragm. Then we're gonna slide in here, third intercostal space, bell, herbs point, diaphragm. Then we're gonna slide it down here to the fourth left intercostal space, to the tricuspid area, bell, diaphragm. And then here we're gonna slide this out at fifth intercostal space, mid clavicular line, to the mitral area, bell, diaphragm. So then when you're listening for any murmurs, any S3s or S4s, so you would say S1 and S2 auscultated without murmurs, rubs, clicks, gallops, splits, no S3 or S4 heard. And that's what we'd expect you to say if obviously if that's what you heard in your exam. And, and that's it for cardiovascular.